Oh, in more scumbag guy news, in more scumbag guy news, unfortunately, one of techno pioneers and somebody I looked up to a lot in terms of his ability to DJ and how he mixes and his sort of showmanship behind the decks, Derek May has been accused by multiple women of sexual harassment. And this is an entire article on Resident Advisor. Not only a Resident Advisor, I think also DJ Mag had an entire article on it too where they basically um, went through accounts of past people that Derek May has sort of come in contact with in a nightlife scene, who he unfortunately, no, who for, unfortunately for them were subject to sexual harassment and assault in various ways. And some of the accounts are just harrowing to read, man. Just re like, you look at me like, Jesus Christ. And it's odd because I think in the beginning of the year, not the middle of the year, there were rumblings around that, um, there was kind of a story in the works about Derek May. There was obviously those posts on Facebook um, concerning a certain individual, I forgot his name, who kind of had an axe to grind with Derek. I don't think he, they got on well. I think something to do with a record or something behind the scenes. So he, got, he went out of his way to kind of sully Derek May's name. So sometimes you look at that, you think, hold on, is this guy just got an axe to grind? He's making up stories. But then there'll be, you read through the comments on Facebook, you say some person heard a different story. They heard this, they heard that, you know, in the scene that he is a bit of a creep behind the scenes. Loads of really bad stuff coming out right because that's what you don't want when a story comes out about your rumors the first thing that you want you want your community to kind of like gather around and sort of protect you and say no nah, this guy's a top boy but when no one does that and everyone's carrying out and saying they've all heard secondhand third-hand stories about how much of a dick you are behind the scenes you definitely have to be worried and i guess reading this account and looking at the list of people and the time frame is well included it doesn't look good for my guy it doesn't look good for him at all um yeah so this is the article here it said an investigation ra by annabella ross alleged victims of the detroit techno and pioneer describe a string of incidences over the last two decades in us europe and new zealand oh my god um so it continues this is an article it says there are a few living things there are a few living figures in electronic music as historically significant as Derek may created as one of the creators of techno music alongside one atkins and kevin saunderson uh, may produce several tracks such as strings of life uh, founded a hugely influential transmit label and has performed on a near weekly basis at clubs festivals around the world for more than 30 years but it's interesting isn't it Apart from Strings of Life, what else has he made that's been as good as that? Not as good. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. That's his flipping, you know, not Magnus Opus, but that's his fucking, you know, that's something that's going to go down in techno history. But it, there's no coincidence for me since the allegations came out and since people have been distancing themselves from him behind the scenes that his production quality has sort of suffered. Is it just, is it just me? Because I haven't really been checking for Derek May production in years. Don't get me wrong, but I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. It continues. He acted as a mentor and a second wave Detroit techno luminaries, including Carl Craig, Stacey Pullman, and until recently was on the board of the directors at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Detroit. Less alone was the fact that since last November, May has been subject to a series of sexual harassment and allegations, assault allegations, sorry. These allegations have existed largely in a Facebook vacuum for the past 12 months until the recent death of DJ Eric Murillo, who has been charged with rape, attracted um, greater scrutiny to the similar claim against May, which led to a number of international festivals and events, including Paris week electronic week and fact 5-1 the hacienda to cancel may schedule appearances interesting for weeks ari has been investigating the claims of sexual assault and harassment made against derek may ari has spoken to 16 people who claim to have sexually assaulted or assault arrest by may as well as many witnesses and close friends of the alleged victims who can support these claims taken together these accounts portray a pattern of sexual abuse that dates back to 20 years and it occurred in numerous countries. Asked to comment on these claims, May made the following statement. As a black man, what the fuck is he talking about? When I read that, I knew this guy was on bullshit time. Bruv, you've been accused of sexual assault people for 20 years. You're sounding like flipping Jeffrey Epstein, you know, Mark II, bruv, like, or Mark III after Eric Murillo, and you're sta starting a statement with other, as a black man. That's the danger we have at the moment. All this identity politics stuff... There is no limit to who can use it, right? You can't say you can use it and that person can't. And they're going to use it just to protect their own back. What does as a black man have to do with anything? As a black man working in a white dominated and openly biased industry, I'm expected to have a, learned the painful lesson that there is no such thing as truth, fairness or due process. Um, when will the long story history of weaponizing sexuality of African men end? <laughs> oh, this guy is a psychopath. What an absolute loon. What? look that first paragraph is mad right but i get it 
weaponizing African man sex African men sexual African American men sexuality. What? What? Anyway, must I collaborate under the duress of my own victimization at the hands of an openly hostile press that amplifies the so-called fears of privileged anonymous women in an internet media lynching? <laughs> I have no interest in legalizing these distortions. Women are the conduit of life and as such are to be protected and not exploited. I live by those words. Again, what is he saying? No denial, no flat out refusal of what happened, the claims, whatever. Just loads of flipping um, token word smurf ship whatever it may be called La later later anyway let's continue the allegations right um 2014 audrey attended of course i'm, I'm assuming these names have all been have all been changed to protect the innocent um yeah that's i think audrey was the worst one audrey said attended a Derek may gig in the uk as an 18 year old she was still in high school at the time she was a huge techno fan and may he was a hero audrey's friend had told her that she had heard may was a womanizer and said that when may wanted to introduce women he will stare at them for ages without saying a word audrey laughed it off and disbelief at the time 2014 right if 1999 doesn't feel so far away 2014 feels like an age away jesus christos and he's been doing it since then at the gig in the middle of May set, May spotted Audrey with a female friend dancing at the front of the crowd. He laughed and said to them, I'll see you ladies later. Audrey was thrilled. I thought, oh my God, he's noticed me. After he set, May approached Audrey at the bar area of the club and invited her and her female friend back to his hotel for an after party. At Audrey's request, her male friend was allowed to come too. Some of her friends also planned to meet them later at the hotel, but were turned away at reception when they tried to join them. So... That's the first warning sign there, right? Number one, if you're 18 and you're going to a techno party and a guy in his mid-30s, late 30s, um, late, early 40s, mid 40s, whatever it may be. If a guy is old enough to be your older brother, whoever it is, right? Some old guy, whatever, even if he's in your age range. Don't go back to the hotel room. Don't. Don't. Just don't. Right? And especially if they especially if they allow you to bring a friend, that's always just to be a warning, right? Because they're definitely trying to play that trick where they're like, Yeah, I'm comfortable, bring your friend. But then when you try and bring other friends that aren't girls, more of them to come to the room and he denies the entry, big warning sign. It continues here. In the hotel room, May ordered red wine from the room service and poured a glass for everyone. For about two hours, we were having the best conversation ever, she says, talking about music, talking about politics. I thought this is just an incredible experience. Again. This is what I mean about disgusting people, right? Like, I have, honestly, I'm an aspiring DJ myself, right? I have absolutely no interest. Like, part of the reason for me, I think most people, when you're a fan of a, a, an industry, you're a fan of a subculture, you just want to be involved, right? You go to your first club night, You, you even just the person at the door seems cool. The person that's putting your you know, put this in a cloakroom, the bartenders, the persons putting the event together, let alone the DJs, right? You just want to be involved in that life, right? In that lifestyle, in that subculture. That's what you want to be a part of. So when you start promoting parties, starting DJing, the last thing that you're thinking about is hooking up with girls, in my opinion, or hooking up with people in general. That might be a good bonus at the end of it, maybe getting fucked up, having drinks, but part of the reason you're getting into it is that whole experience, the whole queuing up, hearing the bass rattling through the building, um, getting a stamp, putting out your ID, putting in your cloak in a cloak room going to the toilets hanging out on the dance floor meeting new people smoking area that's what you want to be a part of isn't it so imagine you finally reach that zenith right you've reached that mountain which is difficult to do right it's very very hard um there's probably more djs than there are opportunities out there so for you to make it in general regardless of your color creed wherever your background is you should be respected you should be adored you should be clapped at uh, well done you smashed it to finally get there right and have fans right people that actually love you they want to come and see you play somewhere that are gonna you know put you know take their hard-earned money to spend on your merch on your on your tickets on your music that you put out to then to bring them into your safe space and to exploit them in that scenario there's no excuses there you are a piece of shit you are a complete piece of shit that's the thing that just breaks my heart when I hear those kind of things, right? Look how excited she sounded at that time, being 18 years old, meeting your hero, Derek May, and then the conversation goes left. Like, God almighty, man. Ah, anyway, continues. Audrey says May had been nothing but respectful and charming and that he hadn't said anything sexual nor made any move on me. There was no flirtation coming from him on either end. Audrey said she began to feel groggy and tired and lay down on the bed. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, again, does this mean she was feeling groggy because he spiked her drink? I don't know. But whenever they make these make these illusions, it always feels like to me like they can't flat out say he put anything in a drink because they don't know. But it always looks bad, isn't it? Bloody hell. The next thing I remember, she says, 
as I began to regain consciousness, was someone to the right of me touching on my side. I opened my eyes and there was Derek May, standing completely naked in front of me with an erection. Jesus Christus. I was still groggy in complete shock and I couldn't say a word. Then he kissed me and shoved his tongue down my throat and I just thought, this is so wrong. This isn't what I wanted or expected. I was not in any way attracted to him and had given him no indication whatsoever that I was sexually interested in whatsoever. Like, God. Honestly, again, for all my guys out there that are in the nightlife scene, please, if ever there was a time to be gentlemanly and to be a stand-up dude, it's nightlife. Because I think from the accounts I've read, being a woman in the nightlife scene or being a woman in, yeah, in general, right, especially after dark, is so difficult. There are so many creeps and weirdos out there. I guess when it goes dark anyway, all the weirdos and freaks come out. So it is what it is. But if ever there's a time that you should be a little bit more of a stand-up dude and go above and beyond to make sure whatever you're doing and wherever you're at is a safe space, this would be it. Especially if you're an artist, right? Because I imagine this this situation goes another way, and you know Derek May is a top dude. He's he's ordering stuff for them. He's buying them drinks. He's giving them amazing stories. He's letting them have signed EPs on or vinyl bits and pieces. He let them take pictures if they want to keep. He lets them take their bed and use the floor. Imagine what that does for the fandom of somebody. You're 18 years old. You are forever going to be a Derek May fan. You're going to be preaching the gospel of Derek May to all your friends, right? Imagine if you're just a bit of a decent dude. But that one experience at 18, even if you're saying, imagine if you says to me, oh no, I was fucked up, man. I, I didn't know what I was doing. It was a mistake. It was one off occasion. That's ruined your reputation for that person who's then going to tell all the other friends and that's going to leave a bad impression for all these other people that you've never met who are going to completely write you off based on a story that they've heard from a girl that was with you in 2004. Just imagine. Just imagine. So again, uh, <sighs> I know this, you know, monsters exist and stuff, but I would hope, especially in my experience, that's what I would be doing. I'd be going above and beyond to make everyone comfortable just so that they can come to my next show again. I wouldn't be trying to stand stark naked next to them in the bed and try and sexually assault them whilst they're sleeping. Like, are you insane? Anyway, Audrey pushed May off her. She was still fully clothed. Audrey said and to me, a female friend who also seemed disorientated, Again, there's assumptions that he might have spiked the drink. He said, let's go. Audrey's male friend later told her that while she was passed out, May said, you can go now. And he obliged. Another warning sign. Okay, if you're the male friend, wake your friend up and tell them that you're going, man. Don't just leave on his request. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, as Audrey and her female friend gathered their bloggers to leave, May started shouting and insulting Audrey. Of course, classic sign of a dickhead. Um, I thought this is so surreal. I'm having an argument with Derek May, a man old enough to be my father whose records I own and who is currently sitting naked in the bed. When I was clear that they were about to leave, May started. May stared at Audrey angrily and intensely without speaking. He says, she says, thank goodness I had been told he, he used this tactic on women. So I knew exactly what he was doing, but it was intimidating and frightening. Unless, oh, I guess oh, it's that tactic that he does where he just stares at you, hoping that you can change your mind, I guess. Audrey calls, Audrey recalls being so out of it when she and her friend were trying to leave the hotel that they ended up in the car park, but they eventually found their way out of the building. After leaving the hotel, Audrey immediately called another male friend in tears and told him what happened. This, frame, this male friend confirmed Audrey's account on a phone call with her as an advisor. Audrey later told other friends what happened in may most of whom said something along the lines of well what do you expect you went back to his hotel room which again if you're if you're someone's friend and they went through something so traumatic at that time again there is a time and a place to say these sort of things that isn't the time if you're that person you're a dickhead too you deserve to be pushed off a cliff um it continues audrey was studying for a levels at the time and recalls feeling extremely depressed following the assault i felt stupid and naive and all my illusions about the techno were shattered for years i have blamed myself for getting in a situation where i was in a hotel room with a man for his actions towards me to this day i still cannot listen to any of his music i feel sick when i see his name written on the poster of a track listing see see and whenever I do attend a gig, I have to make sure he's not on the lineup. Oh, yeah, yeah. First of all, it's not your fault. If ever this happens to you when you're 18 years old, it's never your fault, right? Um, I'm, again, I'm always going to put responsibility in the adult. I think the adult should be the adult in that situation. And you shouldn't be getting to... If you need to drug somebody, allegedly, or get them drunk to the point of them passing out in the bed for you to get with them, they have no business being in your room. That's what I'm saying. If you can't get with somebody that's 18 that adores you, right? with them just being completely sober, it's never going to happen. You should be never trying to get with that person in the first place. That's my opinion on that matter in the first place, right? But it's never that person's fault. It's always within the fault of the adult. That's the responsibility where it lays into it. My issue with this, again, is that it looks like a thing that's 
it's not an isolated incident. We've obviously had the Eric Müller story. We had the other occasions of other people getting involved in some sort of issue. There's definitely something about this in nightlife industry with high profile DJs where they sometimes feel a little bit untouchable. They sometimes feel as if the rules don't apply to them, where they feel like they can get away with absolute murder. And for some reason, again, my opinion, especially based on the Octavian thing, it's less about the individual, Eric Murillo, um, D Derek May at this point in time, allegedly, and other people as well have been accused in the past. And it's more so about the support system around them and an industry that protects them from any kind of retribution. Because if you're telling me that RA and DJ Mag are the first people to talk about this openly or to know what happened behind the scenes, I call bullshit. I think his agents knew, I think his label knew, booking managers, people from different bars, and no one was willing to speak up. No one was willing to take a stand and say what needed to be said because they didn't want to risk retribution, they didn't want to put anyone out because they knew most likely or not, if they call him out, Derek May, because I think if you're Derek May and you're a flipping dickhead and you're a sociopath, you're definitely going to be like, well, if, if you're talking about me, why not this guy? Why not him? Why not her? Because I'm sure it's rampant in the scene. And that's the issue. The support system lets these monsters get away with this nonsense. And the people that suffer are the victims. Are the victims, innocent victims, 18 years old. You're going to a gig. You're a baby, right? I can imagine what an 18 year old looked like in 2014. I bet you they don't look at 18 year olds at, you know, in 2020. So any... Um, defense you're going to say about oh she looks like she's 22 though no that's a kid fair enough they come to the raid fair enough they, you want to invite them to your room and give them a, an amazing time and let them know and let them you know convert them into being a fan for life like I said imagine if this went a good way and he signs a, an EP he takes amazing pictures with them he tells them stories he lets them get drunk on, on his um, mini fridge you know whatever and lets them sleep before they go home in the morning and you get some an Uber in the morning and doesn't do anything just as a gentleman it's still weird right you shouldn't be invited to 18 year old's room anyway but let's say he did that that way they're going to be fans for his for life for life bro but he doesn't. He said he, he does the opposite way. And again, that's 2014. So there'd be what, 33 now? 34, 35? Come on, man. That's the annoying part. And again, look at the accounts. Look at the accounts. I'm not going to read all of them, but 2008 Amsterdam, 1999 in Toronto, 1999 to 2000 in Wellington, New Zealand, I'm assuming, 2012 in Detroit, 2005 in London. Like, absolute disgusting. And again, some of the some of the things that have been going on online the response to this has been quite shocking for some reason i don't know why it is whenever these accusations come about facebook seems to be the worst place for the responses to read everyone's defending him on that page i don't know why it is why it happened to eric Mueller too all the people all the people that are defending him were always on facebook never on instant or facebook and instagram i feel like eric Mueller and some industry people too but for the most part the people on facebook seem to be very very um understanding of eric Mueller's or derek may's position oh like those girls are to blame why they go to his room first oh, you know the nightlife scene is i'm making excuses which is disgusting to say the least and again i'm saying categorically as a fan of nightlife as a promoter myself as a dj myself if you're in an event and you're doing anything that involves women, that involves, you know, uh, the female form, go out of your way to create a safe space. Go out of your way to make them feel comfortable because out there, there are absolute monsters and heathens that are doing exactly what this person's doing and making their life an absolute misery. And it's very, very distressing to read. And I'm, and again, big up the ladies for coming out and kind of, you know, detailing their stories and raising the account in public. But God almighty, man, imagine, just imagine like absolutely insane absolutely insane so yeah i'm interested to see how this develops i don't know what the next stage is like what do you are there kind of um legal proceedings that can be brought against him i don't know what you know again maybe the, it's best that they spoke about it open and be able to kind of get that weight off their shoulders and kind of set themselves free from it in some way shape or form but i don't know how he's going to be punished for this if he is found guilty um regardless i'm glad it's in the open so people can talk about it openly and maybe this will kind of spurn some sort of reaction some sort of change in the industry with it probably not but derek may's excuse or Derek may's reasoning behind it calling himself you know starting it off with i'm a black man just makes me sick to my stomach really but yeah man what an absolutely horrendous story but i'd love to know your thoughts on that story let me know in the comments down below what do you think do you think derek may's been unfairly treated do you believe the accounts of the women do you think there is a problem with sexual harassment in nightlife or in dance music? Let me know in the comments down below.